Welcome to Incredible Idaho. I'm Wayne Walker. Tonight in our first story, we'll take you down to beautiful Henry's Fork of the Snake River. It was named for Andrew Henry of the Missouri Fur Company, who established a fort on the river's bank in 1810. It's a magnificent stretch of river tucked into the southeast corner of Idaho with roots reaching back to the very edges of the Continental Divide. The sources of the Henry's Fork are as spectacular as the river itself. This is the appropriately named Falls River. It begins in Yellowstone National Park, then heads to the west, spilling over cave falls on its frantic journey to join the larger river. In the soft morning light, the spray from the cascading water explodes in a mist of sunshine. The long years of drought have been banished by a wall of water. Further to the north, another source of the Henry's Fork gushes down the side of a mountain into a pool surrounded by lush green. Warm River is fed almost entirely by springs and flows so quickly it seldom freezes. Some say Big Springs is the real source of the Henry's Fork. The water is clean and clear, pooling up from the ground and becoming a river within a hundred feet of its source. Perfect habitat for trout, it pushes towards the Henry's Fork bringing the big ones that have made the river known worldwide as a mecca of fly fishing. Big Springs merges with water from Henry's Lake to pour into Island Park Reservoir. Below the dam, the tailwaters flow into Box Canyon, already peopled with a number of serious fishermen on this weekday morning. The river meets a virtual gauntlet of ardent anglers as the Henry's Fork works its way through the old railroad ranch at Harriman State Park. But the most dramatic stretch of this beautiful river is the section that rushes over spectacular upper and lower Mesa Falls, a fitting finale in this year of big water. Whatever, if you want to just hang on so it gives you your balance, that's all you need to do. Okay, but you know what? Just below Mesa Falls is a steep, rocky trail that leads down to the river's edge. Local ranchers Brian Loosely and Brad Rhodes breezily inform us that they have been launching fishing boats from the bank below since they were boys. Our trepidation turns to astonishment as they begin to propel the aluminum boats down the vertical trail. It is not designed for the timid, or for Teva sandals for that matter, but our rather ungraceful descent reflects our inexperience at dragging drift boats down impossible inclines. Now they can just hop in from here, can't they? Just slide on in. The two powerful cowboys, dressed appropriately in solid boots, handled the aluminum boats like they were reluctant heifers on their way to the barn. We tag along, feeling, well, like tag-alongs, determined to do our part in this strenuous caper. Wayne has a little bit of sweat going. Wayne definitely has quite a bit of sweat going. We reach the trail's end and yank the sturdy boat over the final lip. Is this required of everyone who launches a fishing trip down the Henry's Fork? Brian answers our question in characteristic fashion with a modest understatement. No, that's not common. Not very many people do this. <laughs> it's a difficult trail to get down, so it's pretty hard for them to come down. Yep, came up after. The reward is a float through some of the most incredible scenery in Idaho, right and it doesn't pale with repetition. Brad has been boating this stretch for 15 years, and it still has the power to move him. You don't get any prettier place than this, though. I've been to Alaska a bunch of times, and this spring especially, as green as it is, this is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Just right over towards the bank there. On your fall through, come forward just a little farther. There you go. It's my first time fishing from a drift boat, and I'm taking every advantage of Brian's years of experience. I, you get more fishing in, I think, uh, by far. You get to you get a great oarsman like Brian, and you get to hang around the, the holes a little bit longer. Back up, take another run at him. Got him. Good. Nice little rainbow one. This is a wild fishery. They don't plan any of the river here. And so uh, some of the fish, we're just starting to get some, they've got some new regulations here and trying to help the river out, try to get some larger fish here. So I think if uh, in a few years, hopefully those little guys are going to get a little larger and we're going to see some more larger fish in this fishery. Little guy. 
Take it easy. Let's get you another ride in here, should we, Wayne? Yeah, let's go for some size this time. Uh, I lost it there. You know, I lose it sometimes with that foam out. Brian learned to fish from his father, Lynn, an avid angler who joined our expedition later in the day. Their love of the outdoors is a heritage that stretches back several generations to 1891 when Lynn's great-grandfather traveled up from Utah to establish a homestead near the waters of the Henry's Fork. Just, oh, I missed one. Hey, really, that was a good strike. With fly fishing, you have to analyze your river and uh, put the fly in the most natural presentation that you can to the fish, or they won't even uh, bite at it. And so it takes a little more concentration, but sometimes that's good. Then you forget your other worries, and you're just thinking about fishing, and uh, yeah, God, it's just more relaxful. I've been skunked a lot of times fishing, but just being out in the in the open and on the river and the peace and quiet, it's a, a very relaxful sport. Well, we should get a strike there, shouldn't we, son? Father and son float slowly down the river, in and out of the golden light, passing through evening shadows where the big ones lurk. These are the times that trigger memories, recollections of lazy summer days gone by. I remember the first fish I caught that was above five pounds. And, oh, was I excited? We even had a flat tire and had to walk out. And I told my father, we can walk out, but I'm taking that fish with me. I don't want to leave it there for somebody to steal. There will be no big fish this evening, but if you were to ask father and son about this quiet float on the Henry's Fork, they would agree it was time well spent. Perhaps conservationist Aldo Leopold said it best when he wrote, what was big was not the trout, but the chance. What was full was not my creel, but my memory. <laughs>